Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Aptera Reboot. Today we're going to take a look at the first 15 minutes of the Aptera Elafe webinar. We kind of got lucky that Aptera decided to post the full webinar, and thankfully Lester posted a link to it in the comment section. In this video they go over how the guys at Aptera met with uh, Alafe over 10 years ago in the old Aptera days. They also go over how their products allow for more space in the vehicle as well as improve vehicle efficiency. Something that was also pretty cool to see was that they show their components uh, durability testing, impact testing, winter testing, heat testing, etc. But before we continue, I want to send out some special thank yous. Get used to me showering praise on the great people in the comments section. I love my viewers and subscribers and I'm extremely grateful for all my patrons. But the comments section really helps guide the direction of the channel. And just a heads up, Lester does have a YouTube channel with great content. I'll post a link to one of his great insightful videos in the description. So check him out. You won't regret it. Now, you know I've got to say this because it's important. Please hit that like button, the subscribe button, and it's little buddy, the notification bell. As always, links to Aptera will be listed below, along with links to my Patreon page, as well as Teespring store. All right, now let's get on with the show. Ready? Good morning, and uh, welcome to the first of a series of tech demos that we'll be hosting at Aptera. Focusing on uh, different areas of the vehicle and production process. I'm Steve Fambro, and this is my co founder and co CEO, Chris Anthony. Happy birthday, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll be here at our new production design studio. During the uh, QA, we'll get a little closer to the vehicle. Uh, we're excited to have our, our good friends from Elafe, Goraj Lampich, and CEO, and Goraj Gotovac as CTO. Thank you guys for joining us. Thanks. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, good job with the names. <laughs> um, we'll, uh, we'll be covering uh, a lot today, and uh, including what makes the LaFe motors so unique, how they're tested, what Aptera customers can expect in terms of performance. So we look forward to doing that with you. Um, both, both of you gentlemen, Goraj and Goraj, I would like to talk about the USA trip that you did some time ago, uh, Alafe's philosophy and, uh, and the collaboration that we're doing now. Um, I thought we'd start by going back maybe 10 years or so when we first met. It was a very different time. Um, what inspired you to come to the U.S. and what did you hope to accomplish while you were here? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Steve. So uh, I actually, I have just returned from Detroit. Uh, I was there last week and it's an interesting place. Uh, but yeah, 10 years back, um, it was different. So, you know, we just, um, we did several years of research and innovation. And then we thought, okay, let's make business. And then we were thinking, okay, how to make business with innovation with something that's uh, not yet out there. And then we, you know, we were uh, we saw the entrepreneurship uh, activities and see that, you know, Silicon Valley is the place to go to. Uh, so we visited several uh, investors, uh, some incubator, incubators like Plug and Play. Um, luckily, we visited also you in uh, your Vista facility at that time. And it was an interesting experience, I would say. So um, we were uh, hoping to get an A round investment at that time, but later we learned that we were not that mature and we were more ready for like a seed round. So um, uh, there was uh, not such a success at that time, but we learned several things about our business model and improved it. And uh, we learned what triple F means, like friends, fools, family. So this is how we funded then the additional research when we got back to Europe. That's, a, that's a, a great info on how you got started because uh, I can appreciate where you were in the friends and family round and then to how much you've grown when I visited you back in October of 2019. Uh, that must have, that's been a, a massive growth uh, since then. So it's great to hear that. Um, tell me, what's, what's the philosophy of Elafe's in-wheel motor design and also the power electronics? Okay, I'll handle the, let's say, uh, commercial aspect and Goras will do the technical. So, you know, we want to enable the vehicle manufacturers such as you uh, to deliver something that's really good for the user, for the mission, and that the vehicles will be, you know, in line with the digital, digital technologies and no longer with, uh, you know, traditional car parts that are becoming a commodity. And, well, we believe that with in-wheel concept, 
uh, there are some benefits like, you know, you have more space, you have better efficiency, you can play with the design, maybe time to market can be, can be accelerated. And we simply want to enable this kind of vehicles. Yep, I completely agree. So this is, you know, this is where we come from, but then the solution, it has to actually support this. So if we want to support companies like Aptera that, you know, want to build something which is, you know, more as Gura said, mission driven, user driven, rather than just driven by the supply chain. Uh, so if we want to do that, then we, we have to provide a platform a platform which is you know very flexible in terms of uh, allowing some possibilities like um, uh, as a new functions new um, uh, new benefits to the user as well as uh, you know really cover the basics or improve the basics you know safety efficiency and these kind of things uh, and we really see the the inwheel motor architecture we shouldn't really focus just on the motor it's about the architecture we see it sort of as blank uh, freedom, you know, so design freedom, you know, uh, control freedom, innovation freedom. So you can, you can basically by using this platform, uh, you can do much more than, than we can even imagine because you know your users and you understand what they want. So technically we are focusing to provide lightweight, efficient components uh, so that you have, you know, really a lot of freedom plus uh, very precise control of these components so that you can build on top of that with your uh, software ideas and, and software uh, functions. I, I haven't made that connection uh, to the freedom aspect yet. But that's quite interesting because uh, we learned from our research of our customers that they, they really resonate with the idea of the freedom of being able to go 600 miles, 1,000 miles to park and charge in the sun. And uh, it's also interesting that the freedom of design of your product helps us deliver freedom to the customer. So that's a great synergy there. Chris. And it's just amazing that um, we met a decade ago uh, and you guys have progressed this motor technology uh, so mightily. And now we're uh, back with Aptera and it was a perfect fit a decade ago, uh, but I don't think you guys are ready. And now I think, um, you know, it, it's prime time. Um, you know, having seen uh, videos of, of how your motors work uh, from your website and Steve's uh, time um, with you in Slovenia, um, it's amazing the durability that these in-wheel motors are capable of. Um, what do you guys do to assure that durability through ice and mud and snow and rain, you know, all the conditions that uh, our Aptera drivers will see um, and put these motors through for uh, hopefully decades uh, of use? Yeah, so, so I thought about this, you know, this is always the main question. Uh, so I said, just talking about this, you know, it doesn't do it justice. You really have to see something. So I, I prepared just a few pictures that I can also share with all of your viewer, viewers uh, today. Uh, so hopefully you can already see. So, uh, you know, when somebody buys a vehicle, they, they imagine, you know, you know, all of this uh, vehicle testing going on before, but it starts way, way before, you know, just, just the components itself all of the testing that's required for that. And this is just a few of the tests. Uh, and, and you can see it's about, you know, climate, it's about temperatures, about humidity. Uh, it's about, uh, you know, water, uh, uh, dipping it in uh, extremely cold water, uh, running it in water, basically. It's about all sorts of loads, you know, using robots to, to, to load the motor to see what happens to it. Uh, and it's, you know, it's, it's very fun to, to develop. Uh, and we really hope that it's also going to come through uh, to the final product in terms of how fun it is to drive. And we do testing, you know, questions about what happens to the brake. Does it heat up? You know, to, get, to have an, a, an answer to that, it's not enough, you know, just to have an engineering hunch. You, you have to test, you have to see actually uh, how your simulations um, compare to, to what, what actually is seen in real, real life. So what we do is we, we do a lot of testing, but we have an amazing testing team. I really have to say uh, that this is one of our, our most, uh, um, one of our strongest teams in the, in, in the company. They don't just do the testing. They built a lot of custom, custom benches. These benches just did not exist before because nobody tested something like this. People did test wheels. So we said, okay, why not use a wheel testing bench 
we just modify it to do what we want to do, to measure the air gap, to, to measure the loads, to see the durability and the changes that, that happen through the lifetime. Uh, and people, of course, they build temperature chambers, but they don't build it you know, to test in-wheel motors with such high torque. So we had to modify it. We had to build around that technology that exists to basically do the testing that we wanted to do. And of course, leverage as much as possible also existing technology because you don't want to be you know, uh, innovating where everybody else is already very, very mature. So you see some testing here. I just wanted to test, you know, uh, it's quite harsh. Uh, you want to test for the fringe scenarios because uh, once you get to the fringe and you overcome the fringe, then you're sure that the car, you know, in normal driving, it's going to be extremely reliable with very low chance of, of something happening. And once, once you're really, really confident and you're done with the component testing, uh, not really done, but once you are far enough, you're never really done once, uh, well, when you do development, uh, then you go to vehicle testing. And, and apart from all of the testing that we do, I, I really you know, cherish uh, all of the time spent in winter testing. It's something amazing. I think every engineer that, that does that, I think it, it holds a special place. And, and we do it now for, uh, what is it, Goras? Is it four or five seasons now? Uh, every year, except except for this year, because of COVID, it's it's been really limited. Uh, but we did a lot of testing, and and it's you know different surfaces, different uh, different uh, inputs to the powertrain, and you really get to know all of your failure modes, what can happen, and that helps you develop you know iron out all of those kinks, uh, and that just connects you know vehicle testing on the high vehicle level. Uh, you know, build up of snow, these kind of things. You just see, okay, it builds up. What happens next? What, what, what could happen? Do I have to test something on my bench? And then you go back to your bench and you do some more testing. And it's very important, you know, really observe, really have uh, standards exist, but they, they just don't uh, cover everything uh, that we do. And of course, when the, the, the machine is ready and when the, when the system is stable, then, then comes the, the fun part. And I... I wanted to show some things and, and to people that are listening, just uh, go visit our YouTube channel. We have a lot of videos uploaded and, and then you can do things like drifting and you can, you know, you can do three months of winter testing. It's as fun as it can be. You, you know, you don't even pick up a wrench to repair something. That's when you know, okay, now I have a reliable system. Uh, and then you can start playing with things like this. And, and um, I'm not sure what Chris and Steve have in mind for you know, <laughs> their demos. Uh, but I'm just putting out there, um, uh, we are not as smart as you are in terms of what your customers want. So just go and innovate on top of uh, what you provide. Uh, and, and there are many things which I could show, you know, uh, testing of, of different surfaces, uh, just gathering input, transferring it to then durability benches and just proving, yeah, this works. And it doesn't just work, you know, for a demo drive. It has to work. You know, for extended uh, duration of time, and th this is this is basically what we are we set out to do, uh, because we do want this not just just as a nice toy, but really as something that people use. Nice, yeah. That's the uh, Aptera use case is probably a lot less stringent than uh, many of the vehicles you test with, right? So, um, you know, one thing um, you know we do a lot of here, and I know that you guys do too, is is testing these motors you know, uh, beyond their capability, testing to failure. But what does testing to failure mean to you guys? And, uh, you know, how do you incorporate that into making the Alafi motor the, the best solution? Uh, for people? Yeah, yeah. So these engineering tests, they are, they're very important to learn, you know, what are the weak points? They might, might not fail, you know, within the, the designated time, but they can fail outside of the designated lifetime. And they still tell you a story. They tell you, okay, what could be within this, you know, scenario? What could be my my first concern? And then then you go and you evaluate whether you want to, you know, honestly spend engineering money and spend also possibly component money to solve that problem. Uh, and and when you have, you know, uh, when you are inventing basically in standards in some respect for this kind of technology, many times. Uh, you really invent first the test, which is you know way overboard, overboard, and then you dial it down when you talk to the customer and you understand the need. So it's really important in the process. We um, see people uh, in the comments to Aptera uh, talk about the N-Wheel motors and how different 
uh, the ride will be. But maybe you could talk about your experiences uh, with how the motors perform in traditional automotive applications and how uh, how you deal with, you know, the unsprung mass that, uh, that, that people often talk about. You know, what, um, um, what have you guys seen in the field? Well, yeah. we did a lot of analysis in uh, unsprung weight and this kind of um, this kind of uh, potential drawbacks. So currently, those uh, OEMs who are you know experienced enough no longer see this as the main issue. Uh, those who have tested the vehicles, especially, uh, so there are some benefits of having a low center of gravity. But the main criteria in our case was you know try to keep the motors as light as possible because this obelisk has multiple benefits on the cost. Uh, and at the end also on the unsprung weight. So the experience with the vehicles that we have is that uh, once you tune the suspension in a proper way, even with a passive uh, suspension, all these, um, all these unsprung weight issues could be easily resolved. Uh, so several tests were done on different terrains with different suspension um, developers and manufacturers, but it's also vehicle specific. So for each individual vehicle, you need the requirements and then tune the suspension accordingly. Uh, the in-wheel motor itself doesn't bring such a huge additional unsprung mass to the corner so that it's uh, pretty manageable. So we are yes. really interested, uh, you know, there are engineers are right now at your workshop, you know, overcoming all of this traveling, uh, traveling uh, issues with COVID. Uh, so, you know, all the feedback that we can get from them, uh, we always get, you know, so to understand how does your vehicle handle, is there anything we can do still? So uh, we are really looking forward to you now increasing all the testing that we'll do together with you. Yes, Jan arrives, I think this evening. Yeah. And uh, we look forward to having him working with us Friday and this weekend. Yeah, I think the, um you know, the, the benefits far outweigh any negatives of uh, putting the motors in the wheels. You know, when Steve and I uh, first started talking about this, you know, over a year ago uh, now, it's just uh, to not have any pumped lubrication uh, through a transaxle or a gearbox to get your propulsion is just a, a whole nother world in terms of, you know, how you get the vehicle down the road. And then if you can put the, uh, the motor in the wheel, uh, it frees up packaging space all over the vehicle for batteries, for other electronic components, for HVAC, you, you name it. Now we have the space for it. So I think, you know, the, the, the technology that you guys are bringing us is an enabler to our aerodynamics, to our packaging, to our center of gravity efforts, to all that. So um, I think it's a, it's a great combination of both what we're trying to do internally at Aptera and what you guys are trying to accomplish with your motor technologies. I think gram for gram, it's very close. To conventional setup because you know the motor replaces the bearings the spindle the brakes the upright component so all of that stuff is in the motor and you would have that weight anyway uh, so i think uh, the and the overall benefits i think are, are much much better yeah this is extremely important what you have mentioned so you know because in big a lot of big traditional oems they have, you know, different departments. So one deals with the powertrain, one deals with the chassis, one with the body, one with electronics. But actually, if you want to use all these benefits enabled by new architecture, you have to look at this in a holistic way. And then on the vehicle level, you can obviously optimize. Very good. Well, we promised you guys an interactive technical discussion today. And so we'll be uh, taking some live questions from our viewers. We are going to, I think, go to video while we move locations out by the vehicle. So we'll rejoin you in a few minutes. Okay, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you found this information pretty useful. If you want to watch the rest of this webinar, I have another episode already uh, posted on the website. If you want to watch the rest of the webinar, I'll post the link to the rest of it right here above. And so just click on that. As always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.